beautiful people, my name is Wendy, and as you can see, I have a very, very special guest with me today. Hello, I am Susan Dinner, the author of the Something Strange and Deadly series and the Witchland series, which is what I am currently on tour for. So you guys know that my little elevator pitch for the Witchlands, whenever I try to sell it to you guys, because you should have read it by now if you've been following me a bit, is it's like Avatar The Last Airbender meets Game of Thrones, but with more feminism and less gratuitous violence. Like, there's still violence, but it's, like, necessary. Thanks. I it's, like that pitch. You like that? Okay. <laughs> it works for you. It works I'm so for happy. me. <laughs> Susan approved. So, Susan, for those of my viewers who have not read Truth Witch yet, what would you like to say about it? Like, if you were to sell it to them. Truth Witch is about uh, two best friends in a world where magic is dying, three empires are about to go to war, and this Truth Witch and her best friend may or may not be the chosen pair meant to bring peace to the land and heal magic. Things are complicated though. That's the simple story, but it's a big series. There's a lot going on. The real tagline. It's complicated. It's complicated. But we're here for it. And you are on tour for book... Is it three or four? Is Sight Witch like I a... can, So I call it book four because it, to me I Sight Witch is integral to reading, yeah. I think. But uh, because it's not the same cast and it's a novella that kind of happens separately from the main story, uh, it's often called a companion tale, but it really isn't. It's, you need, you need, you need to read Sight Witch if you want to understand the story, and it's it's so worth reading. It's beautiful. Sorry, plug for Sight Witch. Thank you. But, yeah. I, thank you. I'm very proud of it. Um, so do you want to tell them a little bit about Blood Witch, since it's the most yes. recent installment? So each book in the Witchlands follows one character slightly more. Um, so there are multiple points of view, but Truth Witch, the first one, follows our Truth Witch Safi a little bit more, and her arc is the driving force behind that book. Wind Witch follows Prince Merrick, the Wind Witch, and now Blood Witch follows Adwin, or Baedwin, because Adwin is Bay, uh, as he wrestles with um, the past and the present and ultimately has to decide between family or future. So it's, I'm very proud of it. I really love it. <laughs> she should be very proud of it. I've read it yeah. twice now. <laughs> You've read it twice? Yeah, I got that arc and I speed read it and then I was like, I have to do it again so that I can give it a proper... Oh my gosh, she made me <laughs> feel so good about myself. It's so good, guys. <laughs> it's you. so good and I will be hosting a read-along for all of these books very, very soon. So stay in touch for that. As Susan mentioned, uh, Truth Witch and the world of Truth Witch, the Witchlands, follows Safi and Assault, these two best friends who may or may not be the chosen pair who are destined to save the world. And a lot of the story of it is just very, it's inherently feminist, and I feel like the feminist overtones, I don't even kind of call them undertones, are just <laughs> central to the story. I'm very... Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're just very unapologetically feminist in your real life as well for anyone who follows your Twitter, which you should or you. <laughs> your My newsletter, letter, which yes. you also should. <laughs> and obviously in Blood Witch, the feminist themes continue with my personal favorite character, Vivia's storyline. And she is feminist in a very different way than um, I'm gonna just be like a woman in a dress, but I also have a sword. She's very like politically minded and maneuvering. She could still kick your ass, but she'll do it verbally first. <laughs> yes. Um, so what inspired you to create such a, like a woman-centered story? Well, there are different ways you can go about this, right? So there are different societies in the Witchlands, and yes. the one that Safi and Assault really come from, there is not so much misogyny going on. But Vivia's homeland, Nebrevna, is just like misogynist central. Mm. Uh, it's full of mansplainers, and so I think people identify with Vivia because it's what we're accustomed to in our everyday world. I used to work in science, which is in the field I was in specifically was very male dominated. And it just, it was, the way you negotiate that versus a, a room full of women is so different. And um, so Vivia's story is, is that. It's, it's about men tra constantly trying to undermine her and how she and her friend Styx sort of navigate that. But <laughs> I'm glad you like Styx too. Uh, Styx I, is awesome. All of, all of the women in your series, like I can't tell <laughs> if I want to date them or be them more and it's just... Uh, either. Um, both. Both is good. <laughs> yeah, both is good. Um, so there, yeah, there are different expressions of, of female power in the book, you know. Vanus and Vivia are both women in power, who have power as rulers, um, and how they use that power and, and how they display their, their feminism or don't, it, it just varies. I wanted to show different, different ways that women can be strong. There are just lots of different kinds of women out there. It's, I hope, an intersectional story, so... 
I mean, I certainly think so. I'm obviously not the ideal person to yes. talk about it. Everyone I've convinced to read it believes so, and hopefully y'all <laughs> will too. All right, because it's Valentine's Day, I have a few more romantically inclined questions. Um, so a question from a friend of mine called Emily from the channel Ink Not Blood. She has asked me to ask you, uh, which relationship or pair is the most fun for you to write? It's either romantic or platonic. Yeah. So one of the other things that I explore in the Witchlands, I think, is the different kinds of relationships and the different kinds of friendships that are out there. And it's really fun. That's probably the most fun part of the series to write because there are just so many different, especially with women, relationships that we have. Yeah. One that I'm particularly proud of is Sophie and Vanis. Yes. Um, oh my god. You guys are gonna love it. Because just because um, they seem to be enemies, but are they? As they get to know each other, mm -hmm. women, we are force-fed mean girl tropes. We are force-fed this idea that we're in competition. And so that is one thing that I did not want ever to be in this book, ever. Um, in this series, and so it, it almost feels like I wanted to set up that it could almost feel like that between Vanis and, um, and Safi, and then... And then it it doesn't. Very much does And not. also Vanus and Vivia, too, and then it very much oh does Oh my god. Um, Vanus is almost supposed to be that mean girl, but she is not that mean girl, so... She so could be, and I'm so glad you did not take it that no, direction. No, I, but I, the, the implica I wanted you to almost think it was going there, yeah. truth which... You got me. Spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's just an exploration of all the different kinds of relationships, and so I can't say that there's one I love most. I just, it's fun. All of that is fun. See, I know it's like not a specific relationship, but it's a type of relationship that you've mentioned. It's heart threads. I'm really glad that they are not like faded, faded. lovers because there is some appeal to the faded lover thing, but at yeah. the same time, especially lately, I've realized it's a choice. Mm -hmm. And I'm really, yeah. really thankful for that and that. I think, yeah. I mean, I think there are lots of ways you can do faded love, and that's not to say that it can be, that it's always bad. I think it, be, it can be handled very well. Um, but I do get, it worries me at times when the faded love feels like it's not a choice. And, um, and so I wanted the heart threads to be something that... It, so a heart thread is the character of Salt can see people's emotions and she can also see the ties that bind people. So she can see when people are in love and are soulmates. But the soulmate thing is a choice. And, and it, I talk about this in Sight Witch, that there can be multiple in your life. Perhaps even multiple at one time for some people. Oh, so, I would love to see that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so then the idea that it's, it is a choice you make and when that choice is made, then the heart thread truly forms. And in both directions. It's, mm -hmm. You can't it's, yeah. be heart thread you without the other person's consent. You can't be heart threads without consent. someone's, yeah, it's, it can only go both ways. It can't. If the other person isn't, isn't feeling it, then there is no heart thread. <laughs> you are married to a Frenchman. I am. And you have mentioned that you, like myself, are part of the water tribe. Yes, what a yes. tribe. What what tribe is is Frenchman? Oh my gosh. I feel like he's an earth tribe. Oh. Cuz he okay, he's he's a Virgo, so that's mm. earth sign. End um, of story. <laughs> and he's just he's so solid. Like literally his like bones you're... are enormous. <laughs> Like, I make fun of him because his whole family, I always joke that we, you can't knock them over. <laughs> like, they're like a wall. Um, steadfast tin soldier. It's so true. I and love he's, that. He's, he's just a very steady presence. Emotionally um, as well. Which is like the opposite of me. I'm a water sign. I'm a Pisces. I'm just, emotions! God, marine I'm, biology, you couldn't escape I know, it. I know, I <laughs> know. It's, it's, everything about me is water, so... So yes, he's definitely okay. Earth. So you're in your witch lands life, you would be a water witch, mm -hmm. married, yes. heart threaded heart to threaded an Earth witch. To an Earth witch. Oh, God. Yes. And you have two beautiful puppos. <laughs> yes. Asimov and Leia. Leia. Yeah, like the yeah. princess. Although the oh, general we now call the general. Her. Yes. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and you were so right to do so. I was wondering. What magical beastie would they be? Would they be shadow fo or shadow worms? Would they be? I feel like. Um, I think Asimov would be a sea fox because oh, they're, yeah? they're fickle, they're emotional. Asimov is a very emotional dog. He's oh. very high maintenance. Love He's me. an Irish setter, which ah. they are very high energy dogs and they just like attention. And meanwhile, Leia, she's my loyal, loyal guard dog. She is just my constant companion's dog. Wherever I am, if I don't let her in the room, she just sits guard at the door and waits. Doesn't matter who else is in the house, she's always by me. You are heart threatened. I'm too. I'm, I love that dog. I love Asimov too, but yeah. Leia is like, She's she's just my little partner, um, and she. So I I think she would probably be like Blueberry. She's a mountain bat, an oh owl. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, owl. That's so much that I want to talk to you about. Oh my owl gosh. with you. Owl is this child character. Um, 
but is she a child? <laughs> I don't know. I, I grew up reading fantasy, you know, high yeah. fantasy, and I feel like that's a... a there was no YA when... No, there when, wasn't, yeah. no, and I feel like a good... Tro one of my favorite tropes is, like, the child who isn't a child. It's also so creepy. It has so potential creepy. to be... Oh my it's god, terrifying scary. and also like the most heartwarming thing. Yeah. So I'm very excited to see where Owls are will go. Alright, we have a few rapid fire questions because Suze needs to go to sleep. Your favorite book as a writer and then your favorite book as a reader. Ooh, I think my favorite book as a writer is probably Megan Whalen Turner's um King of Atolia. I'm reading The Thief right now. Are you now. reading? It's oh incredible. My god. Oh my god, she's she's my hero for writing. I mean, yeah. The The Thief is good. Queen of Atelier is amazing. King of Atelier is going to blow my mind. Is I think the best plotted book I've ever seen. I'm so excited. You're going to be it's so good. Oh my oh, god. I'm glad I bought them all because I'm going to marathon them like I can already it's tell. So, like it's so, so good. good. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I wish I could reread them and oh. not know cuz it's like now I know it's still amazing, but like the first time, it's one of those you set it yeah. down and you're like, oh. but you don't want to. Yeah, you don't want to. I'm, oh, and that was the feeling I got when I read Truth Witch. I oh, made the mistake you. of reading it in a plane going home to Croatia <laughs> from the winter, and I was like, I need Wind Witch now, but it's in my carry on, and I can't. <laughs> I cried. <laughs> well, I'm it glad. Was, uh, I'm glad, and thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and as a reader, and as a reader, yeah. Gosh, I I I think the book that I I wish I had written. Yeah. Which I guess is still as a writer, but also as a reader. The book that really yeah. transported me probably more than any other book was um, Jonathan Stranger, Mr. Norrell by Susanna Ooh. Clark. It's, it's, it's really big. Yeah. <laughs> it's very daunting to people. Um, but it's just brilliant to me. And it's, yeah. I love prophecy tropes and I mm -hmm. love when people subvert them, which we talked about yes. at the event. Uh, and she subverts it in a way that I just, I, I to this day, I remember that reading experience. I remember like getting to that point and just being like, oh my God, all the pieces connect. Look at that, and it's such a cool experience as a reader. When if you, you like that experience, <laughs> read them. <laughs> Thanks, I do try, I do try. I will just be shamelessly plugging you because you refuse to. I can't. <laughs> I can't. You should, you deserve to. Your top one piece of writing advice for absolute newbies. I know that everyone's process is different, I know that you've recently-ish like found your own my process. Own process. Yeah, it took which... a while, it's trial and error, but yeah. honestly my, my biggest advice to, to writers is um, find a community. Mm. Being a writer is very isolating and people who aren't writers do not get it. And so it's really hard to relay the difficulties with your draft or to complain about how hard the industry is to just someone who's not in it and doesn't understand. Um, the average person thinks writing is easy. <laughs> so exactly. But um, so it, it it's so helpful. It will help you get through things. It, it's cathartic on the bad days to just have people who get it, a community who understands exactly what you're feeling and can help just kind of let you vent <laughs> or to support you because other people also don't understand how significant the triumphs are when you get them. They don't get it. So it's really, really wonderful to have a community. Would you recommend like people who are like on your same sort of I mean, that's stage? usually the easiest way to meet them. Like the I, debut mm -hmm. circle. So like I met when I was first joint, starting to get online, I connected with a lot of aspiring authors. Publish and crawl, yeah. Yeah, before that it was Let the Words Flow, yeah. and before that I was just on Twitter trying to find people, you know? <laughs> and you, you kind of end up in a group of people who slowly all get published around the same time or over, you know, a few years. You're all on this journey together. It's really good. Thank you so much, oh, Susan. Thank, thank you, you for oh my gosh. coming here and oh my for gosh. agreeing to talk to me, especially since it was so last minute. Uh, you're so welcome. You always make my ego very happy. <laughs> you're like, well, I'll good for my soul. <laughs> oh my god. So, I hope to have this video out very, very soon while Susan is still on tour. I will have the rest of the Blood Witch tour dates posted in the description box below. I don't know Thank why you. I pointed they're not back there. Um, but if she's coming to a city near you, please consider going please. to talk to her because she's an eloquent, beautiful, lovely human who writes beautiful, eloquent, lovely books. That's me. And even if you can't go to see her, I super recommend you buy Blood Witch because it's out right now and you can get your hands on it and it's beautiful. But if you haven't read the rest of the series, also buy them. You will not regret it. They're wonderful. Start with Truth Witch. Start with Truth Witch. So if you liked hearing Sue's talk and you think she's as eloquent as I clearly think she is, you should also <laughs> consider signing up for her newsletter. Whether you're a reader or a writer, she has some fantastic information and resources out there for you. And I mean, just getting to know her is it's a good Thanks. time. Yeah. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you liked me or Sue's, maybe consider giving this video a thumbs up. And if you like me especially and think that my content's good, maybe consider subscribing to this channel. Ooh, I talk sure. about I talk about the Witchlands a lot. So, <laughs> so if you like this, there's more like it coming. Um, 
I think that's all the time, the time we have, actually. I'm gonna ask Susan to sign some of my books and then she's gonna go nap, I hope. Maybe you should Just, eat some cookies. I'm gonna eat, yeah, yeah. and then sleep until my plane. <laughs> yes, so, so we, Susan's gonna eat. Oh my God, this is the best day of my life. She's great, sign up, subscribe. Oh my god, I I just, I can't say a real goodbye, so just, I will see you later. I won't be this smiley, but it'll be close. <laughs>